The flame-haired femme fatale in Quantum of Solace, Gemma Arterton has played a Bond girl, heroine of English literature Tess of the D'Urbervilles, and everyone's favourite next-door neighbour, Tamara Drew. I love your new hooter. It's not actually new, it's just smaller. <laughs> a familiar face in her native Britain, Arterton has since spread her wings, appearing as a fresh-faced ingenue in Franco-British production Gemma Bovary, and now in Raju Mialenu's The History of Love, where she plays Alma, the love interest who sparked a saga. Gemma, thanks so much for joining us on France 24. You're starring in The History of Love uh, as a character who's referred to as the most loved woman in the world. It's quite an accolade. I think we can say that director Raju Mialenu is a true romantic, but what about you? I am a romantic, and I don't know if that's a quality, like a... I, I, I think I romanticise things too much. I, I think it's sort of what actors tend to do a bit. Yeah, but I, I think Radu is way more romantic than me. <laughs> I'm a bit of a pessimist these days. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> now, love letters feature in this story. They're an important part. But today, with our keyboards and our touch screens, do you think we've lost that romance? Text messages are sort of like mini love letters, aren't they? But I'm still a big fan of handwritten notes, and I always do handwritten letters. Um, and I've received a few love letters in my time, handwritten ones. Um, <laughs> I think it's a lovely thing to do, like receiving something and then keeping it and rereading it and it getting old over time. And, and you stash it away in a drawer and then you find it again. You know, there's been times where I've wanted to like print out email chains because they're love letters too. It's just a different format, but I'm still, I'm, I'm old fashioned. I, I like a handwritten note. Once upon a time, there was a boy who loved a girl. They made up thousands of games. He promised her he would never love another girl as long as he lived. Leo. The film features a central love story that's interrupted by the Second World War, but we revisit that story some years later in the Polish Jewish community of New York. It's all rendered in perfect period detail. How did you do your research into that community at that time? There was a lot of research to be done because it's a very specific... The, the Polish Jewish immigrancy was uh, a, a very specific thing. It's very, very quick, and a lot went to New York. Um, well, they went everywhere, actually. And my family are Polish Jewish immigrants, so it felt quite personal. I wanted to sort of explore it for that reason. Um, I did... Actually, I had to learn a bit of Hebrew. I had to learn Yiddish. But then we did a lot of work on myself and Mark Rendell, who plays the young Leo. We did a lot of work on uh, research on Holocaust um, survivors. Um, there's quite a bit of footage um, of people interviews of people that moved and what it was like for them to move to New York and how it was to set up life there and learn a new language and it was a it, in, in a way it's sort of that period of time such an incredible time because there was a huge it's sort of a little bit like now people are moving about and and restarting their lives and and cultures were being formed cultures were being destroyed it was a, yeah, a very dynamic, dynamic time. But yeah, so the, the accent was a big, a big part of the, of the character um, work. But then I just sort of got on with it. Leo, we will get married in New York. Promise me you will come. I promise you. Well, you certainly nailed that accent, and that's not the first time you've learned a language. For a film, you speak French, and we saw that in the film Gemma Bovary, playing alongside some of very well-known French actors, uh, Fabrice Lucchini, Elsa Silberstein. What was it like working with a French and English cast and crew? I loved it. I like being a foreigner. And um, it was a really great time because I was learning French, and so I was sort of out there just talking to people and I didn't understand anything. A lot of the time when Fabrice Lucchini was talking, I didn't, didn't know what, I was, what he was saying, which was probably a good thing, because he does go on a bit. <laughs> um, but it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was great. And, uh, and it really opened my world up doing that film. And since then, I've worked on two other French productions. And Anglo-Saxons, we like to be in control. We like to be very clear about what we're saying and, and, and think about what we're saying. And, 
And I quite like being uh, actually not knowing. I remember going to a dinner party in Paris while I was making Gemma Bovary and I had such limited French at that time and sort of just feeling like I was in a bit of another world and the conversation just sort of washing over me and I quite I quite liked that rather than sort of being in it. Um, uh, yeah, so, and now I, I, you know, I can hold my own in a conversation now, but um, at the time it was challenging, but in a good way. In that film, your character charms everyone in the village, mainly because you're an exotic import from London. Do you think they really played up to the English Rose stereotype? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I saw the character as quite banal and quite normal and just like a regular girl from you know, down the road, which she is. But if you put that in Normandy, it becomes exotic, kind of rosy and, and Englishy. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but it's funny, if you put an English girl in a, in a French world, it, you are exotic, um, even if you're the most banal. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gemma Bovary was the second time you worked on material from Posey Simmons because you were in Tamara Drew in 2010. What is it that you like about the characters she writes? They're very honest and quite sort of, I don't know, they're not very likeable. Um, they do things that are not necessarily good. Um, and I like that. Posey's very honest about, and she's very, very observant of, of, I mean, when you read Gemma Bovary, it's, it's very, very bang on about the French culture and the English culture and the way we see each other. Um, same with Tamara Drew. Looking back at your body of work, you've done action movies, you've done Shakespeare, you've done comedies, and now you've done a sort of feminist zombie movie, The Girl With All The Gifts. What does this film bring to the zombie genre? Oh, it's so much more than a zombie film. I mean, that's the way you describe it, I guess. But it's a very humane, um, it's quite, it's, it's very realistic and deep. It's also got a young girl as the central character, so there's something fresh about it. It's very feminine as well, even though there's sort of guns in it and stuff. It just, it, it's just a different take. It, it's, it's a sophisticated zombie movie, I'd say. She saved me, and you're still afraid of her? Yeah, and you should be too. I am producing a vaccine, and she is the main ingredient. What am I? Hope. And what drew you to that project particularly? I don't usually like those kind of films, like zombie films. I've enjoyed them, but it's not the, what I'd necessarily go to see in the cinema. But I read the script blindly. I didn't know it was about that, and I just really loved it. I, I think it's very, very well written. The writer is really exciting. He's got a great new voice. The director is this, like, exciting new talent. This is his first feature. Um, and also, you know, it's the first gender-balanced, racially-balanced film that I've worked on. I found that very exciting. Where none of the women are talking about their fellas or boyfriends or sleeping with anyone. It was just great. Now, you got a big break in your career in a Bond film playing Strawberry Fields in The Quantum of Solace. The whole idea of the Bond girl it has come in for some criticism, some people saying that these women are there to be objectified. <laughs> Do you think the Bond franchise has gone far enough in rectifying that issue? It, what they tend to do is put, like, a really strong female character in and then they put, like, the one that he sleeps with in. And I was that one, actually. This is the one he sleeps with in. But I was also funny, which is OK. I don't know if they can even do anything about it. I mean, it's so... I'm a feminist, and yet I quite enjoy watching, like, films like James Bond. There's this really great podcast called The Guilty Feminist, and every single week they, they do this, like, I'm a feminist, but... I'm, and then there's one of them that says, I'm a feminist, but after my friend told me about her science um, project degree, blah, 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 all I could remember is which mascara she prefers. <laughs> like, things like that. I'm a feminist, but I've got a crush on Don Draper from Mad Men, who's a massive chauvinist. It's like there's certain things that are just in the world, and you kind of got to decide what to choose, your, you know, which battles you want to fight. Like, Bond films, they're Bond films. They are what they are. We can make other stuff that's, like, challenging the, the genre. Um, I'm not going to make films like James Bond anymore. I really loved making that film. I had a really good time, but it's not what I do now and it's not, you know, it's not where I'm at right now. 
And in terms of your upcoming projects, I believe you'll be starring as St. Joan on the stage in a theatre production of George Bernard Shaw's play. She's a big French historical reference, a person from he French history. Have you found anything to identify with in the character? Yeah, I, you know, the more I go into it, the more I realise that she's just like a real whippersnapper. You know, she couldn't have gotten on with doing what she did if she wasn't sort of really brilliant and fun to be around and sharp and 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 determined. And I think I've got a bit of that in me. She's a, one of those people that comes into a room and, and, and changes the room and then she leaves and everyone follows her because she's ahead of them. I think sometimes Joan is played as a saint and that's really, really wrong. Um, even though she was, she did become a saint, I don't think she's saintly. And in terms of upcoming projects in cinema, you talk about producing. What would you really like to get your teeth into in terms of producing? I've got loads of stuff. I've got two comedies that I'm producing. I'm really, really, oh, I want to make a very, very, very good British comedy that's like pushing the boundaries now because we've done that kind of working title thing from the 90s and I think we need to change, we need to get things a bit more up to date. So one of my favourite writers is Angela Carter and I really want to make something about one of her adaptation, um, adaptation of one of her books, but loads of stuff. Okay, we look forward to hearing more about <laughs> it. Thank Jim Martin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> there was a boy who loved a girl. They made up thousands of games. Another girl as long as he lived. نقاش فرانس 24 جدل الان وحديث وتعليق من وفي كل مكان. France 24 c'est une passerelle entre les cultures, c'est la diversité. It's also a great way of sharing it and discussing it on social media. We give a voice to women and girls, whoever they are, wherever they are. هل تعرفون باريس؟ أحقا تعرفونها؟ تابعوا فرانس 24 لمعرفة الناس. Tout ce que vous avez toujours voulu savoir sur l'Europe, c'est sur notre chaîne.